Call this meeting to order, please. Of the Whitley Select Board, July 25th, 2018. Uh, I'd like to read something that I have to read because we have one of our three board members remote. Um, this is steps to allow remote participation uh, to establish a quorum. Uh, Joyce Palmer Fortune is participating remotely um, and she is not available to attend in person due, due to geographic distance. Um, such remote participation is authorized under 940CMR29.10. Uh, therefore, all votes of the board shall be cast by uh, roll call vote. <coughs> Any questions on that? Can you hear us, Joyce? I can hear you. Great. Okay. Fred Mintz. Motion to approve the minutes of. July 11th, 2018. Second. Roll call vote. I'll second that. Okay, roll call vote. Vote Joyce. Uh, I would approve. Fred? Yes. Yes. <coughs> okay, um, now's the time for public comments. I'm going to just reiterate what I've said before. Um, public comments is not defined as. Um, debate within the room, um, looking at each other, shouting at each other, we're gonna be civil about comments. Everyone's entitled to their opinion. Um, and I will allow comments made by individuals on behalf of others through a written statement. Um, so I'm opening this up for public comments on any topic you would like to, to, to choose, though I have a feeling I know which one's gonna be the lead. Is this the hearing or is this the... Oh, I'm sorry. Um, it's before, because we have to allow that, and then we'll open up the hearing for those public comments. Thank you, Brian. Yeah. Does anybody want to talk about anything other than the hearing for public comments? And, and be sure to, I know you are, but be sure to say your name and address. <coughs> Neil Agram, 184 Chestnut Plain Road. I don't know how many hearings there have been on other topics related to Club Castaway, uh, so I can't cite which hearing it was, but in a previous hearing, uh, when the uh, licenses uh, were uh, reviewed, there was discussion and testimony about noise and about violence and in the discussions, the only comments that were made were about avoiding this, perhaps mediating among the abutters and the new owners. In all of that discussion, there was no mention of the ordinances, or the ordinance, that governs establishments such as this. I understand in more recent hearings, the existence of the ordinance has come to the attention of everyone, hence there is a hearing about requesting a waiver for the new owners. My comment is, I do not understand how it is that the current ordinance, now that it is fully understood and recognized, is not being enforced for the current owners. In particular, there has been no enforcement, as far as I understand, of the requirement that the current owners have a police officer present. And my comment is, I think now that everyone knows, I think the current ordinance should be enforced until such time as a waiver has been approved. Thank you. Other public comment, preferably not related to what we're going to discuss in the hearing. Okay, um, we're going to open up the public hearing uh, to consider a request from Whitley Investments LLC for a variance from Chapter 62, Section 8 of the Whitley General Bylaws for 226 State Road in Whitley. Um, that does not have to be voted, does it, Brian? It's just opening the hearing. Nope. Okay. Uh, public comment on the request for uh, a variance. Susan Baring, 120 North Street. 
In reviewing, review, in looking at online for reviews of Castaway to get a better understanding of what is going on there, I found well over 100 reviews on a number of different websites. And a fair number of these reviews are talking about activity that's going on there that is basically illegal, that is against, um, I don't know how to cite that, 62-14B, that prohibits any act or acts uh, or to simulate any act or acts of human masturbation, sexual intercourse, or any touching of genitals, public areas, breasts, or buttocks of any other person. Clearly there is touching going on. Honestly, I'm not comfortable reading these quotes aloud. Unfortunately, I couldn't get the counting machine to work. I printed out two, just two of them from one of the websites. I've circled the text that is indicating based on customer testimonial that this activity is going on. So first of all, to what Ms. Draper was saying, we need to be enforcing this immediately. This is a matter of public health and safety if this activity is going on there. Second of all, in terms of the variance for police coverage, I honestly believe that if a security guard is there instead of a police officer, a security guard who is hired by the owner, it's the fox watching the hen house. You've got the security guard, there, there is no incentive for the owner or an employee of the owner to prevent this type of activity, and who knows what other illegal activities are going on that we don't have, you know, haven't found evidence of. But because, frankly, it's bad for business. It looks like, based on reading a number of these reviews, a draw of the place is the fact that you can get a lap dance. And we need somebody there who is going to protect the safety and the health of the public and enforce the regulations, and that would be a police officer who is not beholden to the owner. Um, I, I saw a hand up here, and then we'll go here. Yeah. Yep. I'm going to read a statement for the camp family. Just, yeah, just make sure. Yeah, I'll yeah. Have you. Okay. I'm going to read a statement for the camp family. The camp family lives on strips. State Road, almost directly across the street from Castaways. They're on, on vacation this week. They weren't notified, by the way. They haven't gotten any of Butter's notifications, so they did not know about the hearings initially. As a resident living with children directly across the street from Castaways, I have serious concerns about transferring the alcohol and entertainment licenses to new owners. I'm additionally concerned that there has been discussion about granting a variance to avoid the presence of a police officer to the potential new owners of Castaways. I'm concerned that as an abutter, my family wasn't properly notified about the issue and I want to be on record as opposed to any adult entertainment without an official police presence as specified in the town's adult establishment statute. Because of our proximity to the club and our location on Route 5, I can report that we regularly hear accidents occurring at the intersection right near the club. We are also concerned about the safety issues connected to the illegal drug loot use and dancers in an establishment so close to our children and their school. We want our family and our property adequately protected from any risk that these issues pose. We urge all three of you to vote no to the variance request at this time. And that's from, again, the Megan and Adam Camp who live on State Road. Which, which property on State Road are you? Be more specific. Yep, I wish I had the number. I just looked for the address and I don't have it. They're not the property directly across the street, but their property borders the, the edges of the castaway property and the camp property are probably 10 or 15 feet from each other. So it's the second house. Is it the Lavallees that have the tall pine? The Valley's on the corner. On the corner, then uh -oh. it's the second white house on right. the left as right. you go north on Correct. the Correct. Thank you. <coughs> right, okay. Yep. Yeah. I'm Ann Fadiman, and uh, I'm speaking for my husband, George Howe Colt, and myself. We live at 169 Chestnut Plain. Um, we also oppose the variance uh, for the same reasons that have already been expressed. Uh, and in essence, it's hard to understand why police presence at Club Castaways would be unwelcome um, if all the bylaws were always going to be followed and always currently are followed. Yeah, Paul Newland, 148 Conway Road. As I understand it, uh, the uh, new owners are asking for a variance to the ordinance. 
which implies to me that the ordinance is in effect. However, uh, it seems to me the ordinance isn't in effect because there's never been a policeman there. So I don't know what the point of this ordinance is and why it's not been enforced. So my question is, if it is in effect, why hasn't it been in effect, if you know what I mean? Is there a reason it hasn't been enforced? Uh, let me just comment on that. The, the ordinance went into effect in 1982 at a special town meeting. Uh, the business was opened in what, 72, 73? 78, I thought. But I when was Castaways a club in 73? 1973. 73. Okay. Uh, and I realize it, it was passed at a town meeting, but there are some activities that are passed at town meeting are either rescinded at future town meetings, or there could have been a variance granted to that club back then that is documented somewhere in records that nobody has said exists or is available. No, the things change. You look at town so reports. It doesn't exist then. There, the select board, this board, before I was on the board, could have granted them a variance to, to not have a full time police there. Nobody knows that. We don't have the resources to look at that right now. That's not the, the, the critical question right now, is to go back and see what they did or didn't do. I think the point is to move forward here with the new owners and, and see what we want. Paul, well, just to yeah, I'm just a, um, yeah, a point of information. A bylaw should have to be approved by the Attorney General's office as being legitimate, correct? And if that's the case, I'm assuming it was approved by the Attorney General's office, so it should be in effect. Right, but there's also the provision for granting a variance in the yeah, That's true, but if there's if no evidence of a variance, that's... Uh, Donna Wiley, 184 Chestnut Clay Road. Um, Fred, with all due respect, I think you're setting up a little bit of a Jabberwocky situation well, for us. We either have an ordinance or we don't. Mm -hmm. I think we, uh, it appeared to me, it was the meeting of June 13th when Joyce read through many aspects of um, the regulations that apply to, to this establishment. So we've known since at least June 13th that the ordinance is on the books. Um, it certainly appeared to me as though those who would be responsible for enforcing it, which is the select board and the chief of police and Brian, I assume, <coughs> that, that it was either brand new news or recent news. But that was six weeks ago. And I think the question that um, is not irrelevant to the request for the, for the variance for the prospective owners, but in fact is relevant is we have a law on the books, we're not enforcing it. What are the situate, what conditions would lead to us thinking that it's acceptable to choose not to enforce a law of the town? That seems to me to be the large question. And that we did not know and that it may have been, <laughs> have been given a waiver, those don't sound like reasons to me. In answer to Fred's statement, the burden of proof would be on the owner to prove that there was a variance. The assumption is there is no variance until someone proves that there is. The burden of proof is not on the town to prove that there isn't a variance. If the current owners think there's a variance and want to submit paperwork showing what action of which year's select board or town meeting granted the variance, let the owner produce that. Even, and Fadiman again, even if such a document could be produced, um, would we not, after a change of ownership, need to grant a new variance? Neil Lambert, 184 Chestnut Plain Road. So, putting aside, but still concerned about the issue of why it is that the town has not enforced the current ordinance and if there's any doubt though select board Orlowski said uh, it was too much work to investigate in fact the investigation would be as simple 
as sending a, an officer of the town <coughs> to the establishment to ask if there's a variance. And if there's no evidence of it, then there isn't one. But putting that aside, we have new owners who have never operated such an establishment. They have no experience with this situation. They have made representations of what they will do to oversee conduct and behavior under their management. But it seems to me remarkably imprudent for the town to offer a waiver in advance of evidence that they are successful. And the evidence should be established by having the required police officer present for a sufficiently long time to report to the town that in fact the conduct is of this sort and may merit uh, consideration of a variance. But to consider the variance in advance of any track record and the new owners have no such track record at another establishment, it seems to me that in the best interests of the town, the select board should reject this request for a variance. Are we, yeah, right, okay. I, I want to give Joyce an opportunity to, but go ahead. <coughs> no, 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 no. Sure. There a, there's a number of people who, who weren't at any of the earlier meetings and so it's worth saying again some of the evidence that came up at the earlier meetings and the evidence essentially was as people have said there's never been a police officer there the evidence also was there's never been a dedicated security officer there, or any type of security there. The evidence was that in 15 years, there's been 15 police complaints, which is one a year. So the evidence is the present owners with no security have never had any issues with regard to criminal activity there. So the new owners came in and said, we'll put in a very robust plan. It will be a, probably a retired police officer from another town. It will be somebody approved by the, your chief of police. It will be sometimes two security officers, whereas before, there were none. There will be lighting, which will make the parking lot safer. There will be a wall, which will decrease the sound for the neighbors. And there'll be all these improvements. Now, in fact, having a part-time police officer there, according to the terms of your bylaw, whenever entertainment is being is available at the establishment would be prohibitively expensive because there are times when there could be five or ten people there. So my clients will not go forward and you will go back to the old owner and the old owner will apply for a variance and you have to have some legitimate reason for denying the old owner a variance. And since he's had no security for 15 years and no police problems, and your variance has to do with the public <coughs> and the public safety, you're going to have real trouble denying it with nothing at all in terms of security. Now, alternatively, you can end up with a very good plan that's been worked out with the chief of police, your chief of police, at at Selectman Edwards' request, we met. We came up with a three or four page single space plan that will protect the town way better in any number of ways than what's happening in there presently. And you'll ensure that there is no criminal activity there. Now, it seems to me that's a much better alternative than the one that's being suggested where the old owners keep on owning it, 
they hire somebody to manage it, and you really end up with, with nothing. And in fact, the chief of police said that he thought that the plan that was being suggested would protect the public good, which is the standard for a variance, and in fact would be better for the town than having an off-duty officer when he doesn't have the capacity for an off-duty officer. So the evidence before you is that the only person who's a professional, who is your chief of police, has said that the variance meets the standards of a variance, that the, that the what, what is being suggested in terms of a security plan meets the standard for a variance. Now, you can deny it if you want, um, and we can litigate that, and you can enforce it against the old owner, and he'll litigate that. He'll definitely win. I think we're likely to win, too, because there's no factual basis other than people saying that you should have, you should have enforced it all along. 59, Joe Zielinski, 59 Christian Lane. You know, Attorney Lesser has spoken in length many times about this. He's creating his own little filibuster here. But for him to speak for the existing owners, I think that you might have an, have an issue with that. He's saying what they're going to be doing. I think that that's wrong, okay? So he should be speaking for his own clients. But when he starts mentioning what, what he has for evidence, he's using evidence going back 15 years on the current owners. Is he gonna be using the same business model that they are? Is he that we're talking about 95 people of capacity there? Has our, has our police chief ever seen 95 people in there? Has, is their plan going to address that? Are they planning to go forward with the same model that the current owners are? I don't, I don't think so. Um, you know, I'm not speaking for them, but I don't think they're gonna be investing this kind of money in using the evidence that has been generated by the current owners. Using the current owners as evidence, I think, is weak, okay? I don't know if it carries any water at all. I know it doesn't. We're saying that this is how they did it, so it's gonna work out for us when we have 95 people in this building. So what he has to say in using my evidence and threatening lawsuits and all this stuff, that's baloney. He has nothing, he has no evidence whatsoever right now to say this is why the variance should be granted. There's no way that the evidence of the current owners can be used as evidence how they're gonna be running the business. And that's, it's ridiculous to think that you can do that when you have five cars in the parking lot and he's gonna be putting 30 cars in the parking lot. How can, we don't even know what that place is gonna look like. I'd love to have 95 volunteers go over there and see what that building looks like with 95 people in it. And then what the parking lot's gonna look like with 40 cars in it. And for him to continue to use evidence of the current owner and speak for the current owner as to what they will do, I think is irresponsible of him. Thank you. Joyce, would you like to say anything? Or do you want us to continue out here? Uh, let's let the people keep talking there. I'm taking okay. some notes here. I just didn't want you to think you were forgotten. No, in, thanks, John. In the back. Could someone read? Uh, Could you tell, say, tell oh, us? Oh, sorry, Nancy Sherman, 147 Chestnut Plain. Could someone read the language of the variance and what its specific, what its conditions are, what the terms are? Unless it's six pages long or something? Well, the, 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 the variance of the two pages that uh, Mr. Lesser and his organization put together, that's what you're asking? To read? No, I'm asking for the law. The, the law? Yeah. Oh, the actual uh, chapter in Waitley what, Code, currently? What circumstances is the variance granted yeah. to the bylaw? Our council will read. But I think that's a fair question. Our council will read that for the record. <coughs> Mr. Chair, the standard for the grant of a variance is that the applicant must show that the public safety and order will be maintained and that the police protection of the town of Whiteley will be preserved in the event that such a variance is granted. That's the standard. Okay. Sir. Thank you. Brian O'Toole, uh, I represent the Constantopolises, um, and 
didn't have a chance to speak yet, and uh, Attorney Lesser, much of what he did say, I do echo. Mm -hmm. um, from what the purpose of this public hearing is today, I think we're getting a little off base, but talking about allegations of what's happened at the Castaway Lounge. No dates are given, it's all anecdotal or anonymous web postings. People really don't know. I haven't seen what was presented to the board, but certainly the owners category categorically deny um, any suggestion that they condone, permit any illegal activity at the club. Um, in terms of accidents at a very busy intersection in town, nothing was presented or has been presented that that's the result of this establishment. It's an intersection. People going up and down, um, east and west. Um, and in terms of, again, it's off the topic of the public hearing for which we're here today, um, but certainly um, we would take into account any actions that we would have at our disposal um, should, after approximately 40 years or so, or, or even longer, uh, of an ordinance that may or may not pertain to the current owners. Uh, certainly, the town should expect um, some reaction if such an action were taken at this point. Thank you. Principal Lyle, my name is Christian Lane. Having been a long time, lifelong resident of Waco, do you people honestly think we would have come up with a bear and asking for a law if there wasn't any action going on here. People in Lake Wakeley do not do that kind of thing. When that was passed at town meeting, there had to have been some kind of action that preceded that to make it happen. We are the Wakeley people. We were looking out for ourselves. And somebody suggested, well, there never was police officers. We don't know that. Perhaps in the beginning there were police officers there. And as with any small town, sometimes things get a little lax and they go under the table and that's just how it happened. But to anybody to suggest there wasn't anything that was happening there, if we would come to town meeting and put up a vote, it's completely preposterous. We have, in the town of Wayland take everything very seriously. And when we go to town meeting, it's not like, like Likely. Ann Fadiman, 169 Chestnut Plain. Um, the fact that only 15 complaints have been made to the police certainly doesn't mean that there hasn't been criminal activity, though, of course, we can't prove that it has. Um, if anecdotal evidence on Yelp, let's say, is rejected, but no police can go in, how do we know what actually is going on? We do know that lap dances are illegal if they were happening, but at the moment, the only people inside castaways would be the owners, the employees, and the customers. And no one in any of those three categories is ever going to call the police and say, oh my god, a lap dance is happening, even though it is illegal. So it seems to me that there are a variety of things about which one might complain to the police. There's one large category about which no one is, who would ever go to castaways would ever complain to the police. I therefore um, don't believe that there have been only 15 um, possible criminal activities in the last 15 years that have gone on in castaways. Yes, John. I, I have a question about the accidents at the intersection. It's not clear to me that anybody from the castaways was involved in any of those accidents. So my question is, was anybody at the castaways coming in or going to involved in those incidents? And are there accident reports that might document such? And if there are, and if there are incidents of accidents involving customers, I can only be concerned that with more business there, the rate of accidents is probably going to increase. And that again would be um, a reason to compel uh, police presence on the premises <coughs> to help perhaps uh, avoid 
increased accident rates at that dangerous intersection. I believe it's the most dangerous intersection in Franklin County. Let me just uh, comment on, on that. I, I've seen the, not the accident reports, but a summary of the accidents that happened at that intersection. It's public information. FERCOG has done that for years. They keep updating it. Uh, most of the accidents occur during the daytime, dry weather conditions. So uh, the club no, is not open during day, daytime hours? No, it, it, it is, but that's not the, that's not the, to my knowledge, the peak volume or, or peak customers for the club. I think the, but the most of the- is it a large percentage of accidents from those customers? I don't know, you'd have to pull each sure. accident record to see that, but, but FERCOG has said that it's, it's not at the time where they're, their peak uh, capacity is for the club. We are, we're fortunate to have the chief of police here. Maybe he can perhaps, I don't know, whether you can shed light on who was involved in these accidents. I, I don't have written documentation uh, available. Um, I can't recall of the specific crashes that were because of people coming out of the parking lot through that intersection. Um, other than that, I'm, I'm not really sure what, what I can speak of as far as the you know, people leaving there causing the crash. I mean, there's. Clearly, other times of the day where there's hundreds of cars going through there, where I can say for sure that because of that call volume, or the, the car volume that was going through there um, was a result of some of the crashes there. But to specifically say that yes, there are incidents from people leaving Capsway there, I don't, I don't have that information available to me, but I don't recall anything off the top of my head either. Just quickly, Joe Zelinsky, Christian Lane. Um, I, I can answer for you of at least one incident, incident, which was less than two years ago, of a somebody leaving the Castaways parking lot, exiting onto Christian Lane, continuing straight to where the Waitley Inn sign is, the big wait yeah. whatever, and crashing in there. So yes, it does happen. You don't have the numbers and, and the police reports in front of you, but I'm the, I was the first responder on that one. So I don't know if there was others, but that's one that happened within the last 24 months that somebody crashed there, crashed their car, ran back to the castaways, and uh, you know tried to ignore that he was the driver of the vehicle and so on and so forth. So uh, you know to say that no, or we don't remember, or we don't have the details, I'm the neighbor, I was the first responder, it did happen at least once. What time of day was that? I'm just saying that we're talking about people leaving it, so it was probably between 10 and one in the evening. Okay. Well, I, I, I don't think that's, I don't think that matters, to be honest with you. Clearly accidents happen for a variety of reasons. Right. To say that they're all responsible for the responsibility of fast ways would be erroneous. You could say there never has been would also be. I, I agree, right. but if to have somebody say that it doesn't, we don't have any records right. of it, I'm gonna tell I, you that I, there I was agree. one. I'm um, not saying it doesn't, I just say I don't have any records. Of and I do have available. one. Available. Okay. The point is if traffic is going to increase there, there's, some attention that potentially should be made to that particular issue as well. Joyce, your turn. Well, um, I've got a few different little notes here. Um, I was sort of thinking about there's like one thing that that um, you're the as far as the topic of the hearing, which is the request for the variance. Um, uh, the, I, I, I don't want to put give you know, short shrift to uh, what so many people have brought up about the non-enforcement of the bylaw with the current owners, um, but I, I sort of feel like that's um, it's a little bit outside of the hearing. That's something that we should probably take up as a board outside of the hearing. Um, but uh, you know, the public comment has um, has been uh, you know very it's been good good to hear. Um, cause and, I, and I think um, Donna summed it up nicely that it was you know late May, early June maybe when I first learned of this bylaw, and I know ignorance is not uh, an excuse. Um, as far as evidence goes, I don't know how well social media reviews will uh, would hold up as evidence, but it does at least seem like it it is it is something factual that I didn't know before that. There are all these reviews out there telling people that uh, you know you can do the, you know things that are are not allowed by the the bylaw that we currently have. Um, but if I put that aside for the moment, because I sort of think that's something we have to take up 
um, separately from the hearing. Um, my main um, my main concern with uh, kind of the whole security setup, and I read the security plan that uh, the applicants have submitted. Um, I, I just I feel like the security personnel are going to have um, an intrinsic conflict of interest. And I think some of the previous commenters uh, made similar you know, comments um, that you know, if, if someone who signs your paycheck, you've got to report on them, you're less likely to uh, report in a way that would really bring out when something, you know, when something wrong or something bad is happening. Um, and I think I said it two or three meetings ago, and I'll say it again, I would really like somebody who, who's, we're signing their paychecks and they're working for us there rather than someone who is, you know, employed by uh, the castaways. And that said, um, that, uh, you know, the, the applicants are, are clearly concerned about the effect this would have on their um, on their bottom line, that uh, uh, police detail, the way things are set up right now, costs something that would be, you know, just really too much of a financial burden, in their opinion. I think it's something like $45 an hour, um, and so that's, um, you know, that, that seems to be the main objection, is the cost. Um, and I don't know if it's practical, but I, I do wonder if there's any way that uh, the security personnel can be town employees rather than castaways employees. And I might, you know, I often suggest things that are not necessarily practical, but it's, it, that's my main concern, is the conflict of interest that those folks have. You know, that, that if they report something that subsequently leads to a suspension or a revocation of a license, that that's sort of putting themselves out of a job. So that, that's my main concern with, with the whole security situation is that we haven't found one yet where uh, other than having a police detail that we control directly by, you know, through employing people, um, that, I mean, to me, that's, that's the real essential difference here. And, and that's the main thing that's relevant to the hearing that I wanted to mention. Thank you. Yeah. Neil Abram. Uh, to that point, I think uh, the starting point is the ordinance, uh, section 62, uh, subsection 8. Uh, there is an ambiguity in the first sentence, which says that at least one police officer shall be on duty, uh, approved by the chief of police. But in the elaboration, it says, unless otherwise notified by the Board of Selectmen, the licensee need not employ a police officer to be present if only entertainment is a band uh, or a vocalist or instrumentalist. So one might need to interpret whether the current ordinance stipulates that it must be uh, police detail of Waitley, it doesn't say those words. It doesn't say that it's a town employee, it says a police officer approved by the chief of police. Wouldn't an off-duty Northampton or Hatfield police officer approved by our chief be satisfactory? And in the elaboration of the alternative is that the licensee doesn't need to employ an officer if suggests that all of the officers that are specified in this ordinance are employed by the licensee. Uh, and it is not the responsibility of the chief of police to delegate the detail. Those words are not here. Instead, it's that the licensee must find an employee, a police officer, who is approved by our chief to meet this requirement. So that's minimal burden on our chief, since cl clearly the records of 
police officers in other towns could be quickly checked to verify that these are officers in good standing that have been proposed. The burden on finding them is on the licensee, it seems to me. And so um, that's entirely different from the scenario of a police detail. Uh, there is, if it were a police detail, there would have to be mention, I suppose, that the town would have the licensee reimburse the town for the police detail. That's not here. The only reference is to the licensee employing a police officer or not under certain circumstances. Uh, and so uh, I think the issue is about the current ordinance and who must do what. And so what is the variance requesting? They are requesting a variance from having a police officer present. But Attorney Lesser said we'll probably hire uh, retired police officers. Uh, retired police officers might even be acceptable to our chief under certain circumstances. I don't know what the term police officer would be interpreted to mean. But what would, must happen if the variance is not granted? Maybe the town attorney can read between the lines to say, look, if you were enforcing this provision, here's what would have to happen. And the variance is a variance from that. Let's, let's know what the that is. What is the variance being requested? It's not a police officer, but what are the details of a police officer hired by whom Clearance approved by our chief of police. But could we know what it is against which the variance is requested? What, what would be the exact thing? I don't think it's a detail. That's no mention of a police detail, no mention that it's a Waitley police officer. It says a police officer. So what would it be that this section of the ordinance requires from which the applicants are requesting a variance. Mr. Yes. Chairman. Yes. The uh, general rule here that I think is most applicable is that you have to read a statute or an ordinance or a bylaw as a whole. The last sentence of section 62-8 addresses employment of an officer and conditions under which employment by the licensee would not be <coughs> My interpretation of this section is that it does indeed call for a private detail police officer retained by the licensee at the licensee's cost. It does not specify that it has to be a town of lately police officer. Uh, in my view, it does have to be an active law enforcement official and not a retired officer. And it has to be someone who is approved by the chief. So, I have a question. I was thinking the same, sort of along the same lines as Neil was, but I, I'm wondering how would you read one police officer shall be on duty when any entertainment is scheduled, etc.? To Neil's point, it doesn't say a detail, which implies on, on premises. Mm -hmm. Does on duty also imply on premises? I think if you read this section, there are probably a number of questions that could be raised, but again, reading it as a whole, I construe the intent to be to provide for an officer to be at the premises, okay. that officer being paid for by the licensee. And I think the last sentence of the section makes it pretty clear that that's where the obligation is. And I, I would suggest that the premise of the application considers that to be the interpretation as well. Okay. So, so, can, can I? Go ahead, I, I just the title of that section is "Police Officer to Be on Duty in Premises." Yeah, well, that's that's right. So I think that would cover. I'm, I'm just bringing up. Yeah, no, I'm just <coughs> answering that so point. Just to follow up more on what you're, you're saying, there. Does it matter if that police officer is, and I hear what Mr. Abramson is saying, is hired by? Well, not hired, but arranged by the town, paid for by the establishment, versus the establishment hiring that police officer direct. Is there a difference? This section, in my view, considers that it would be the licensee who makes the arrangements, either through 
a scheduling of persons who are available for details from the Waitley Police Department or persons from other departments in other communities who are approved <coughs> by Waitley's chief. So it's the licensee has the obligation to to find police officers to work there, security that needs not approval, but has no objection to our Whaley Police Department. Yes, it would be similar to, saying. for instance, a utility uh, company or some other work site that requires a police officer for safety. They would contact a department or departments right. and make the arrangements. Is that how it works, Jim, here? I mean, you, you do details. Is, is the, if Eversource mm -hmm. needs detail, can they do that independently or do they have to go through you? They contact us. They, no that's other required? Would the, no other town would have the authority to come in and do that without, without us because they don't have police powers in our town. Unless they're here in mutual aid or unless they're requested by, by us. So that's why we have to call them to have them come in. It would be. Does that, does that, <clears throat> Is that consistent with your thinking? Because I'm, I'm hearing two different things. John, Jonathan, if I may, uh, several years ago at a meeting, we had a discussion about what fines should be charged to Eversource for delays in payments. It was very clear that those details for Eversource and other <coughs> utilities were paid by the town to be reimbursed by the utility and we didn't have sufficient uh, motivation, if you will, from uh, fines to motivate them to pay up, and they were very much in arrears. But, but that's different, that's utilities. This is this ordinance, and we've heard the town council say that this would be a different situation. I guess I'm, so it's not the same I'm, as for I'm, I'm going at who's responsible for procuring, not paying, but, but, but arranging that, and, and I'm hearing council say that the town or whomever could procure, and then Jim is saying only the town, and, I'm, and, and so I'm hearing different. If I may, the procuring, is it general? Arranging. Arranging, I, say I think the, the, the step, or the first step, if you will, as this section contemplates, is that the licensee reaches out and it would be logical that the licensee would reach out to the Waitley Chief because any officer who's going to be serving in this capacity under this section needs to be approved by the Chief. So then the question is, is it going to be a Waitley officer who's available? Are there Waitley officers available? Or would it be an officer from another department? The, this kind of a statutory or bylaw provision is usually not going to get down to the level of detail that we're getting at now. Okay. I think the main point is that an arrangement needs to be made and the financial obligation rests with the license. I, I, I think everyone understands the, the last <coughs> one. In the back. George Reynolds, 147 Chestnut Mango. I just have a question and a clarification, maybe. So there are many honorable people here who suspect that there's been illegal activity going on. And maybe there has, and maybe there hasn't. I don't know. But if I and maybe my neighbors call the police and say people are racing up and down Chestnut Plain Road, I think what the police would do, and I know they do because they've done it many times, is they park a car on Chestnut Plain Road at appropriate times and you know find people and ticket people who are in fact doing that. If somebody set up a still in the woods and it was illegally making white lightning and somebody heard about it, you'd probably have to go up into the woods and tear it down. There's a strong suspicion here that there's illegal activity. The question of a variance comes up about that. Well, why can't the police just occasionally, like they would on Chestnut Plain Road, park for a couple hours in the parking lot, go in from time to time at random, collect evidence, look at it over the next month or six weeks. And you know what's going on there now is probably gonna continue in the future, whichever way it is. If it's not happening, it turns out, then maybe it wouldn't happen. If it is happening, I argue it's gonna to continue to happen. But we have a vehicle for um, finding out. 
which is the normal, I think, correct me if I'm wrong, activity of the police when suspicious or potentially illegal activity is in it doesn't You don't need a bylaw, you don't need anything. You need people saying there's illegal activity going on from the police staff. Well, I think, well, I'm hoping that would happen anyway, if, if, if <coughs> just uh, allowed uh, the licensee to have his own security, I would hope that the, our police department would randomly go in there and check and see what's going on. Just don't ignore everything because they told us they have a police officer or security there. I would hope that's not going to happen that way. And I don't know today if they even do that. Uh, randomly go in and check and see. We don't randomly do compliance checks for, you know, for the entertainment aspect of things. <clears throat> there are compliance checks for the service of alcohol, um, so there's compliance checks in that sense. Um, we have staged in the parking lot across from the parking lot in the area watching activities. We have been in, we have gotten anonymous phone calls, and we've investigated things, and we haven't had anything materialize into something where we could file any criminal charges. Um, but, the, yeah, certainly, I mean, I can only speak for the last 15 years, or 18 years that I've been here, <clears throat> we've had a number of those occasions where, where we've done those things. So that's going to continue probably with the new owners. Absolutely. All right. <clears throat> yeah, I, I want to agree and disagree with a number of people. My name is Margaret Christie. I live at 175 Chestnut Plain Road. I think, George, that um, when you're speeding down the road and you see a police officer, you slow down. When you are doing something illegal, like you're in the middle of a lap dance in Castaways and an uniformed officer walks in the door, you get up quick. Um, so I think the only way that the police can interrupt that kind of activity is the way they do with the speed trap. They're there all the time, and you know they're there because they're always there, and so you don't, you know, invest, you know, you don't engage in the activity. Or they hide, which is a whole other question that I don't think we're taking off today. Um, so I, I guess I disagree with you there. I agree um, with Joyce. I have concerns about conflict of interest. I agree with Anne that, and I think a number of other people, that most of the people, all of the people who are regularly at castaways have no incentive to report most kinds of illegal activity that might regularly be going on there. And I also want to point out that although it seems clear that the town of Whiteley has not been consistent, um, in fact has been lax perhaps in our enforcement of our rules, that when um, Whaley residents have had the opportunity to speak up about castaways, we have been very consistent, I think, in our opinions, because not only do we have this ordinance on the books, but our town zoning in our table of use says that adult entertainment is not allowed in any zoning district in Whaley. That was passed at town meeting. I understand that that's not enforceable, so I'm not making an, a point that we should be enforcing that, but I think we can take it as testament to the sentiments of the town at the time that that was passed. And so I think we have been consistent over time that we have concerns about this business, and so I would urge you also um, not to grant this variance. And then? Um, Nicole Lankowski, 22 North Street. Um, I just want to go on record to say that I also ask you to not grant this variance. Um, I agree and echo a lot of what our, our townspeople have said about the conflict of interest and the, the safety of, of the town. I think um, something that hasn't been brought up is the health and safety of women and particularly the entertainers that are there and the fact that they, you know, they may be encountering sexual harassment. We haven't heard about what type of plans there are to deal with that type of thing. There's also a ripple effect of this type of entertainment. The women who are there are the direct ones being um, exploited, but then also people who go there and then go home to their families may bring a certain idea about women home that goes out into the community. Also, I would point out that the children of Waitley have to learn about this type of entertainment and this type of thing at way too young of an age. And that's also a health and safety concern. Here, here. Mm -hmm. um, with regard to sexual harassment, at one of the earlier meetings, a very detailed sexual harassment plan was presented to the board. And that was one of the reasons the board approved the transfer of the liquor license and the granting of the entertainment license. 
we haven't talked much about the security plan. There's been a lot of talk about what presently happens inside the premises. But the new security plan would have cameras which were inside the premises, which detailed absolutely everything that happened inside the premises that would be available to the chief of police at any time. So if there were any lap dances or illegal activities, they would show up on the camera. Right now you have no ability other than the police walking in and as someone said, somebody jumping off the lap because you don't have cameras in there. Part of the new security plan is to provide cameras, sufficient cameras so that every square inch is on film and available for review at any time and all that footage has to be held by the new owners. So in fact, there'll be much better security and there'll be much less likelihood of any illegal activity were the variance granted. Can I ask a clarifying question? Yep. Yeah. Um, I thought I heard Mr. Lesser just say that the um, inside the indoor video would be available to our chief of police at any time. Is that correct? That's my understanding. Um, because as I read the security agreement, it said something about proper judicial procedures um, or at the discretion of castaways management. Can we strike that then from the, from the proposed security agreement that uh, uh, regarding the indoor? Because I, what I understood was that the outdoor footage would be available at any time, but the indoor footage has this phrase proper judicial procedures uh, written in, which sounded to me like a little bit of a roadblock to getting the indoor uh, video. Well, the indoor video. Uh, I'm wondering if that's, I just want to make sure I'm reading that you, correctly. You, you are and, correct. And, the indoor video would be available upon a request from the court. So if there was probable cause of any illegal why would it why would it have to be the request of the courts and not just our our our, our town because that's governance the way, because that was a negotiation over this you tell you you ask us to come it's up not with the spirit of what you said okay you ask us yeah to come that's, up that's with why the, that's why i wanted to clarify because, because what you said was our plan. police chief could look at this at any time it didn't say if he went to the court and got a subpoena I, I, or whatever the right thing whatever I'm proper so judicial close. procedure means um, but the, the, so that, that's why I wanted to make sure that that was what you meant. It sounds like that's not what you meant. I misspoke. It or be, maybe it, it is what you meant. It would be maintained. It would be available. But it would be uh, if there was obviously anything serious that came up and the police needed access to it, be provided. But otherwise, it would be yes. It would well, be if there was problems. I, I, I would assume that's it because that was a discussion with our police chief, and, and we're the ultimate approving authority. I would assume that that's something to discussion with this board that about in terms of access. Well, anyway, that. That, that's that's where we ended up. Okay. You ask us to come end up with something in writing, which we yeah. did. I, Brian said that I had asked. He's going to get a copy of the latest plan that you sent this afternoon. I, I had actually suggested that they be put out for public display. I don't know whether that happened or not. There's, there's two things. Well, the there's, summary. There's a plan and a summary. Uh, so we never saw the security. That, that hasn't been anything that the general public could see. Is that correct? That, so far, that's correct. I, I was suggesting that the summary document that was created would be but it has for it. review, but it has not yet. And, and that's something that I, I requested earlier today, actually. Paul. Yeah, Paul Newland, uh, Conway Road. I have a question for Attorney Wesser. If the new plan, security plan, or whatever it's called, is so good um, and so thorough uh, it, and, and better, it seems to me he's making the argument that it's better than the bylaw provision um, well why wouldn't the owners prefer the bylaw provision if it's a more lax provision I, I don't understand the economics behind the two options here it must be economic can somebody explain that Certainly. 
It's obviously economic. We've been saying that from day one. Okay. okay. Nobody, no business in Waitley can afford a detail every hour they're open. In fact, I'm trying to right now sitting here. I'm sorry. I'm Julia Solko, one of the owner, potential owners. I'm trying to sit here and think of a business that actually has detail every hour they're open. Absolutely. A prison? I mean, can anyone give me one example? Well, any, any highway construction. Retail What's the point? Stores, right. The point is, it's it yeah, makes it cost prohibitive. Unfortunately, this is an establishment that you guys don't agree with. We understand. Everyone's entitled to their own opinion. Absolutely. There's very real people that work there, who are residents of Waitley and other towns. We're talking about people's lives and livelihoods that you guys may not agree with. No question. That's fine. But this has been going. This place has been open 40 years. There's no evidence of any issues here. And if we didn't get the, when we were here for the transfer, it was the sound. Then it was accidents. And now the last thing that the town has to hang on to, this is the truth, is this variance, which is completely unrealistic. There's no business that can operate like that. I was at the licensing board today in Boston for four places that have capacities between 200 and 300. Nobody's operating with police the entire time. <coughs> Eleven million dollar deal. It's a huge price tag. It's who's huge who's huge operating price. a business like this anywhere? Who has a full uh, any of those full mood? No, but no, exactly. what, That's the I've never been to a new club that has it either. Las Vegas doesn't even have alcohol and nude and full nude. Yes, they do. No, they do not. Yes, they do. No, they do right. not. Okay. You know what, okay. Joe? We, we agreed to do your wall, right? I mean, yeah. Oh, so that's where you're gonna hang out right now? Come on. Oh, hang out the wall? <laughs> Come on. Come on. Be realistic. Guys. We're Tell not, me a business that not, has it. We're not going to have a shutting match between each other. We're not going to do it because I'll, I'll just close this thing right now. I, I, I just had one question, Fred. When we spoke earlier, I had strongly encouraged that the summary plan be distributed to people here so that people had a chance to digest it. That's not to say that we would allow prevailing wisdom and sentiment among the group to totally drive our decision. but. I think it's in their right to see the plan so that they understand what we are ultimately going to vote on whenever we decide to vote on it. And I'm, I'm missing that hasn't happened yet. I have copies here. Um, we talked about whether the applicants would object to them, the summary that was sent to them. <laughs> for the piece of it. Yeah, and, and I'm going to. So it might be a question we want to ask. Really them. strongly encourage that that they not have a problem with it, because I don't know why they would have a problem with it. But is there a public policy be, be for giving it to the public? Because there's a public policy for not giving it to the public, safety. What's the public policy for giving it to the public? Seriously. I'm gonna to point to council here. Mr. Chairman, I looked at the draft plan as it existed on Tuesday. I prepared this summary document, doing so with an eye to not disclosing those things that I felt either the police chief or the licensee would want to be kept confidential in order to preserve elements of the plan that one wouldn't want to be sharing with those who may want to get around the plan. So uh, the town administrator did forward a copy of that document this afternoon. Uh, so I believe the applicants had a chance to look at it. So I guess I would just ask, is there any component of that document? We haven't had a chance to look at it really. We got it at 3.30 or 4. Okay. I saw hands, Neil. So uh, I'm intrigued uh, by this, and I respect the uh, town council's opinion that certain aspects of a viable uh, security plan uh, ought to be relatively private so that it uh, has its maximum uh, power. But if this is a hearing about a variance on the assurance that there is a security plan and you're asking for the town's people to comment on the request for variance on the assurance that there is a security plan without the town's people being able to see the security plan and comment on it, then we're being asked to comment in the abstract about a variance with, without some of the evidence on which we could comment. And so it seems to me you're in a situation of needing a continuance to allow adequate time for townspeople to see this summary 
and to come prepared to provide comment to the licensing board uh, okay. ab about the request for a variance. And so I, I don't think you're really in a position to decide. Now, let me uh, Wait, wait, I, I, Neil, I just want to say, and if I sound defensive, I apologize, but I said not more than five minutes ago that I had strongly suggested to you guys. I, so, I know you so did. When you say you, I, I just want to make sure that. No, I, I'm just saying that because it played out the way it did, and the applicants haven't had a chance to respond to it, we're just not ready to share it. And it, even if you shared it here, uh, those who might want to comment would be at a disadvantage. I, I agree. I, I, I want to make a second point, however. There's only one such establishment in Lincoln. There is an ordinance. And it allows the board to grant variances. If the board grants a variance to the only establishment in town, the board has chosen, for whatever its good reasons are, to substitute its judgment for the judgment of the people of Waitley who voted the ordinance. And you have the authority to do that, but you have, will have chosen to do that. And if you do, I suggest you should come to the next regularly scheduled town meeting and present those rationales, what persuaded you, uh, for comment, because it might well be that the townspeople would choose to say, well, then let's drop the provision. Or they might say, we're going to forbid a variance of that provision. Uh, and you need to give the townspeople a chance to say whether this all works. And, and so whatever you decide, whenever you decide, I think it needs to be a subject for the next regularly scheduled town meeting uh, to decide whether the ordinance itself is appropriate or should be amended in some particular ways that work the will of the people of Waitman. And, and I, would, I would only add, and I don't necessarily disagree with you, but I, I want to remind people that at some point, and, and I know I wasn't in Waitley in 1973, two, three. At some point when the bylaw, the, the, the bylaw was passed, at some point, perhaps immediately, perhaps we don't know what the timing was, a, a select board, a town meeting, someone decided to not enforce that. It could have been the day after it was passed, it could have been five years, we don't know. But I guess I want to make sure that people are aware that at some point, a decision was made not to enforce by individuals with much closer memories to the bylaw actually having been passed originally. That, that's just that because I know, and, and I don't know who said it, I wasn't aware that it existed. Nobody, to my recollection, knew that it existed before whoever found it found it. So, so if I may. It is speculative to say that a decision was made. Yeah, absolutely. It, it, it could just have been not enforced. Yes, absolutely. And, and that, that is to say, ignored. That's my uh, guess. Forgotten. Uh, we don't know that there was a, a decision by someone. It was just not done. Right. Now, all we know is that it was not done. Absolutely. Uh, and so beyond that, we don't know. We don't know. And hence, it would be good now nearly 40 years later or 40 plus years later to have the town speak as well yeah I, and i don't necessarily disagree with that let me fred and then joe okay uh i think we're, we're we're talking two different documents here two different actions one is is a security plan and the other is the variance the security plan was required by the part of the provision of a license the security plan was supposed to be developed, there's certain criteria on it, approved by the police chief. That was the only action that was to be taken on the security plan. And then approved by us. And, well, I don't know if that language is in there. <laughs> it's, okay. it's, it's subject to the chief's approval. Subject to the chief's approval. But unless we think... object to the chief's comments, chief's approval, then, then I, I guess we have input in it. But as far as the formal approval, it's the chief and and i think that the security plan is 
going to be in place regardless of what we decide on the variance. The variance is, is talking about whether you have uh, on-duty police officers or not. That's true. And the two are going to go hand in hand. And one can operate kind of without the other. And we haven't come to a decision to say that we want full-time police or we don't want any police there. Or, or in other words, granted a variance. Uh, there yeah, needs to be I some think I think I relate to what Fred had just said. That the reason the security plan is coming up in this discussion of the variance. Um, is because in the uh, in the bylaw where, uh, regarding the variance, um, it's I'm pulling it up here. Um, it says the applicant must show that the public safety and order will be maintained, and that police protection of the town of Whateley will be preserved in the event that such a variance is granted. That's why it's relevant to the discussion of the variance, uh, because that is part of them trying to show that the public safety and order would be maintained. So that that's why it's an integral part of this hearing. Right, and I, I would agree with that. Joe? You uh, Joe Zwinski, 59 Christian Lane. You know, this has been a lot of fun showing up here every two weeks. And you know, these Boston guys are sure fun. love coming, you know, from Boston and everything. There's been, you know, obviously we've been here every meeting. There's others that have been at a few. Some have been, I don't know if there's you know, at, all, at all of them. A summary of a security plan, if I put, if you put that in front of me right now, isn't going to tell me anything. I'm not going to say yes, it's a good security plan, or no, it's, it's a bad. I'm not, going to, I'm not going to know. It's not going to do anything for me. We've talked, we've beaten this thing to death, right? We've had extensions, we've done everything. It's now, it is time to take a vote, right? Take a vote. There is nothing to extend. Each time we get together, we just say there's another thing that we want and then we beat it up again and we rehash things that somebody might not have been here two weeks ago we rehash that again the people who are taking the vote are the three people sitting up there that i believe have been at every meeting you have all the information you had the security plan that we all said you needed right everything has been said it's time to take the vote well yeah. I, Catherine Wolkowitz, Chestnut Plain Road. I just want to make a couple comments about when you do get to the point of the vote that maybe there are some options potentially to not to choose to defer a variance until the, the new operations are going until give them a year or six months or some probationary period and allow them the opportunity to come back at a later date and request a variance after we've seen the kind of operations and maybe a police officer has been able to attest whether or not there have been any illegal activities happening, or potentially to, well, maybe I'm just gonna leave it at that. But I would say that there are still some options regarding the vote. I wanted to know whether there's a requirement that abut abutters are notified about public hearings like this. We had discussed the definition of an abutter for this, and I don't yeah. know. Brian, do you abutters? Okay. okay. Thanks. We and have, for the earlier hearings, same thing? For licenses. It is. It worked. Okay. Well, I was going to ask whether a decision had been made not to notify the abutters in that case. <laughs> but I really, that's. No, we notified, the, we notified the abutters for the, for the license hearings. For those well, hearings. Th I would say that the particular family that I read for claims to have not been notified. And they may have fallen out of the specific well, geographic. Yeah. Definition because the land isn't exactly across the street, but they're certainly within eye shot of an earshot of the bar. That, that may have been, been the case. I, I, yeah, I, I'm not really sure what happened, but I think we drew a perimeter around yep. the castaways. Sure. Because um, we have to. You have to call it somewhere, it somewhere. of course. Joe, you know, go ahead. And I have to, okay, I'm just going to say one more, thing. and I appreciate those comments. But those are the, that's what I'm talking about. We've discussed that before, that there's options that you have. Yeah. So we, we're going to keep on rehashing this thing. The people that have been here for all these, and I, and I do, I appreciate you showing up and, and reading that and everything, but I be, truly believe now is the time to take the vote. You know these options. You know, I mean, we're just going to keep on okay. pushing this thing out, and I don't and know I, why. And, and one thing that I've been saying a lot, we can, we can, whatever we decide today, uh, if they don't abide by that, we can pull their license anytime. We don't have to give them six months or a year. 
that can happen anytime this board wants that if we have evidence that something is going contrary to what we approved we can pull it anytime it's not a one year and, and you're free to do whatever one year then we'll decide no that's not that's not what we're we're going to do here mike you've been very patient thanks um joe i appreciate your comments you've been to a lot of these meetings i've only been to one other um I, there is an issue that hasn't been discussed yet and that is about the um the pub style food um there are you know while that has not actually been applied for yet that is still hanging out there um, there was a request or a, a, a goal of establishing a pub style restaurant uh, menu um, that's going to involve a complete revamping of the kitchen a look at the septic system and there are multiple issues with that so it's not that we've seen everything yet thank you Very well. um, i do have concerns about not uh, seeing at least a rough draft or some summary of the security plan because that's what the basis of knowing it's safe personally knowing what the boundaries are i spoke with the gentleman after last our last meeting and i said i have to know the specifics you know if this is happening here what where does that information get conveyed how is it recorded are we going to end up in the same kind of trap we ended up the last time we voted on this bylaw? What kind of guidelines are there? Is that document, is that in that security document? Who, who are the enforcement? I don't care what the security is as much as the, I want to know what the, when something happens, where is it recorded? Who records it? How many things would be a violation? One, two, fifty, a hundred? That, that's the thing that concerns me the most. We, you can say in generalities, oh, we're going to review it. Um, I have a question. And I will direct it to you guys, but your attorney may want to answer it instead. What do you consider your predicted high foot traffic days slash nights? Just there's Nick Speckle, there's gonna be a holdover period. I think if we can all just come to grips with that, it's not like we close and there's 95 people in the parking lot. There's a little bit of a wait and see period as we transition, get rid of some inefficiencies that are there. So, I mean, there's a holdover. I don't expect it to be day one. We have 95 cars there. It's totally unrealistic. You know, it's totally unrealistic. It doesn't I, I happen guess, that way. I guess my, my, my point and, and I'm- Jonathan, if I can tell you, if we have 30 people there, that's like a successful night. You guys see what's going on there now. You know, the, the idea is to raise the ticket price, which is terminology in the for how much each person spends in the establishment. Okay, I don't think all of a sudden we're gonna be able to pull 100 people there. So, but would it be fair to say that there are certain nights that you'll have more people than others? I hope so. I hope, I hope, I hope Friday and Saturday nights are- Restaurant business, 70% of your, of, your, of, yeah. your, of, your, of your gross receipts are yep. realized on average on a Friday and Saturday. Yeah, yeah, no dispute here. I hope Ryan Saturday is more successful than Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday. I do. Okay. I, I, I can see, verify with my own eyes, this past week or two, that the number of cars in a parking lot at one o'clock, two o'clock, four o'clock, six o'clock, eight o'clock at night, I can count them on two hands. And that's counting, and that's yeah, yeah, counting so, employees that's that are there. So, employee cars in a parking lot. and. Now after nine, ten o'clock, well, you know, one evening, yeah, there was more cars in the parking lot. And that, that's either business or that's Yankee Candle getting out at ten o'clock shift. I'm gonna I'm I'm gonna go out on a limb and say that you guys are gonna be no different than any other restaurant. Friday and Saturday are your, are your peak days and Thursdays you're counting on being strong as well. That, that that's when people go out. Yeah. There's a reason that restaurants are oftentimes closed on Mondays. So, I, I, I just want to throw out there that there may be a, a, a middle ground to test this out. I'm also kind of curious, uh, I, I'm, I'm liking Joyce's comment about 
how it would be, and it doesn't change the responsibility of finding things, but it's, it's a town employee as opposed to a castaways employee that is overseeing the day-to-day -day and the ongoing operations of, of the establishment from a security perspective because that town employee then and then and then it would be contracted out and, and it would be an accounts receivable payable situation where we where the town would bill castaways so that, that person is then reporting to somebody in town as opposed to reporting to someone who does have a, 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 a need for a return on an investment <coughs> What would happen when that person doesn't show up? We call the town, and whose fault? I mean, what happens in that gray area? Well, yeah. what happens? I mean, period. What happens? That can happen, who, regardless of who they're reporting to. Mr. Chairman, may I yes. speak? I, I, I might have put my foot in my mouth. And from an insurance and liability and several other bases, I would strongly advise against having a town employee be the responsible okay. security officer for this or any. That's fine. I, I'm just, just just before we go further on that point. Yeah. I I know that when the discussion about the cameras and the video recording um, got started, Attorney Lesser made a statement which he's retracted about the availability of that. And there was discussion that the select board might require its availability on request to the chief of police rather than by a judicial subpoena. Uh, and I want to just remind you that that came up and if you accept the request that you move to a vote on the variance, uh, might you consider whether you're going to amend the security plan, perhaps uh, yeah. overruling the chief I have to, not forgotten to, to that no, I uh, and, and not just proceed to the vote on the yeah. variance. And I, and I would add to that, I think what you're suggesting is sort of a middle ground of get, having the coverage Thursday, Friday, Saturday without access to the video. That doesn't really work because we don't know what is going on in the place the other days of the week. Uh, it's open to Yeah, everyone. I mean, I, <coughs> I hadn't forgotten that. Yeah. Um, I guess the, other, the other days would be like the police are saying that these random periodic visits here to see what's going on. He can tell. I, I mean, he's going to interview the, or not an interview, but knows the people that are working security there. And I, I guess I would place some responsibility on, on him and his experience to know whether that person is, is doing an acceptable job or not. So, so here's what I'm thinking. Um, first of all, the, the piece about the video camera being accessible has to be changed. It, 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 it has to be changing. It can't go through the courts, and I don't know why. I don't know what the what the difference would be between inside in, internal and external cameras. And, and Jim, I see you raising your hand, so I'll let you throw your two cents in there. But yeah, I just just wanted to clarify the discussion about that as far as the inside goes, because of the activities that go on in there. It was a privacy concern that just making that information just blanket public. So if if we have access to it, the public has access to it. So it's, it was a little bit of a sticky ground because of the privacy issue. Right, but I believe, and I'm going to look to counsel here based on a conversation that I had with Brian earlier, public record laws, there are exceptions to public records laws if privacy is a concern. Is that a remotely accurate statement? Yes, and in my view, you can construct a plan that includes a provision for access by the police, which is not going to be public record because the reason for this all is, is a security issue and there are both privacy and confidentiality and other concerns here. But the reason for the police to have access would be for enforcement of public safety. And that gets to the essence of what you're acting on and right. reviewing the variance. Right, so okay. To that extent, and to others, the security plan and the variants are related. So, so I, I, I think I'll stick with my request that that part of the plan be amended. And then, as separate as they are, they're also 
joined at some level as well. I'm going to suggest that for a four month period of time to find a middle ground, because the owners have never had experience with the type of an establishment, and because even our police chief has said, we don't know what's going to be needed if they hit the numbers reaching capacity. Because we can only go by what has happened there in the past. That between the hours of seven and one on Thursday, Friday, and Saturday nights, we require a police detail and on Monday and Tuesday and Wednesday nights, that police detail, duty, whatever the, the terminology is, is not required. For a four month period of time, and then to be revisited when we can assess what is working and what is not working. So I'll throw that out as a trial balloon, just because it's in my DNA to find a middle ground. Well, I, I think that's, too many hours, again, based on what I see happening there today, realizing there's going to be more traffic, more business, and we have time to decide if that's actually going to happen. They have time to decide if it's going to happen too and how they want to do it. Uh, most details are on, on a four hour, four hour minimum shift, right? So if they, their closing time is, is one or everybody's out by 1.30, the four hour shift would start from 9.30 to 1.30. I think the 9.30 to 1.30, uh, at least Friday and Saturdays, is, is to me is an acceptable time to have an on-duty police officer there. You, you're going to hopefully catch some of the Yankee Candle shift changes in there at 10 o'clock and the late night people. I'm not sure Thursday is, is that busy a day, but uh, otherwise if, if you go, well, 7 to 1, what are you, you're talking one shift or two shifts for that person? The duty officer would that be covered under one or two? Seven one and thirty six hours for us after after four is um, eight. So it goes in four hour blocks. For it goes in four hour blocks. Four not blocks. So it's not four minimum, and then it can go to five six. It's either four or eight is what you're saying. Right. And and what I've seen at, at six or seven o'clock, even eight o'clock, Jonathan. Is is very limiting. Can we can we very few? Can we limit the conversation and give my ears a? So let me return to the question what you discussed with the town attorney, uh, Jonathan, which is whether we are talking about the police detail, or are we talking about the, uh, which, actually it seemed to me, the attorney was, our town attorney was suggesting was unwise to have a town employee um, there. So um, you, well, but or rather an employee by the, the club of a police officer approved by the chief. And, and so you use the term detail, but that's said I'm not sure that's the right vocabulary. I, I think before you get into discussing whether it's town rules for details, you need to decide whether in fact you were talking about detail and what that means. Or are you talking about uh, a police officer employed by the club? Well, well, I think that our council said that the definition is certainly someone on premises. So, however you wanted to find duty or detail, that person is going to spend X number of hours on premises. Yes, and the question is, who is the employer and what employment rules? Well, I think yeah, and I think council has said that the employer. Well. If it's a police officer, from what Chief has said, that person, when they're in Waitley, reports to, to you? Yes. Is that accurate? Yes. So the security personnel that are, that's in the, in the plan, they report to, but when the police officer is there, they report to our Chief of Police as part of that detail, just like someone who's at a poll <coughs> construction correct. would report it reports to you yes. correct correct so I think that's clear and unless I'm missing something well, in your eyes uh, well the town attorney advised for insurance reasons against having a town employee in the establishment 
So yeah, I, I think I need to clarify. Yeah, no. I, 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 yeah. Right. I was not speaking as to a police officer. I, I took the suggestion to be that a security chief or security personnel would that, be yeah. a town employee, and that's a that's different arrangement. Right. Mm -hmm. Whoever the officer is, mm -hmm. that officer's employer is going to be the same. What's happening in a situation like this is that the licensee or any other private party is retaining that officer's services and making a payment for it. The employer-employee relationship will continue to be between the officer and that officer's department. And, and indirectly. And so, so subject to the supervision of the local chief. Right. In this instance, wait me because it's town up. Right. Joe. Uh, Joe Zabinski, 59 Christian Lane. Uh, just wondering, where the four months came from, Jonathan, and I would say, based on what they're talking about over here, there's not going to be a lot of change in four months. I would say waive the first four months and, and take the, you know, and I'm, you know, I mean, right. and you know, the because there's not going to be, a, what's that? Yeah, let us be, let us have a chance to no, create a culture say, of responsibility. But the first four months, there's right. not going to be any and, change. And Joe, that's fine. I'm, I'm, I'm throwing it out there, and when the clock starts to tick, that's fine. And I, and I would welcome a conversation. And let me go on record as saying that I don't think that you should waive that, but I think four months isn't going to tell you anything. Okay. Sure. So are we, are we talking about a waiver an hour, or are we talking about an entirely new scheme? I mean, are, are we really, are we talking, I mean, it seems to me what Joe Polinsky is saying, you know, is, I, 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 I'm, I'm feeling the dead horse being beaten here, and what I hear being discussed is sort of random and hope, probably valuable discussions. But I think you guys need to go make a draft of what you're proposing, and we come back and, and look at it. I mean, I don't think we're going to decide that here. And and, and please note, this was my trouble, and I haven't talked I, about. No, it I appreciate it. These guys. Wrong, but I'm just saying, I think the discussion is now evolving into a brainstorming session about a new proposal, which, you know, is okay, but it, it, it's not going to, I mean, do you want to take another three hours and discuss it? I don't think so. No, That's I, all I'm saying. I, I, we, we have to discuss it in open meeting. I we mean, do have to discuss it. No, but we meeting. need a proposal on the table <coughs> to, to work with. You don't need sort of good ideas. We need, here is what's written. And here's what you're going to vote on. And here's what we're going to yeah. vote on. But that discussion has to take place in, in, a, in an open meeting, unfortunately. No, but, that's fine. I'm just saying another meeting in this one. I'll oh, I'm comfortable doing it at this meeting. I don't know why we need to postpone it and come back. To because I haven't seen the draft of what you're proposing. proposing. Right. No proposal. Joyce, what do you think? Wow. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> um, I, I, re, I, like I said before, I think the security plan is kind of integral to the, um, the applicants being able to show what they need to show. Um, it's, I've seen it and I agree with John. I, I was not that comfortable with, with uh, you know, the, what well, seemed like roadblocks to getting interior footage by our chief of police. Uh, I was um, more generally uh, not thrilled that there be this conflict of interest with whoever is providing the security. Uh, and those are my main comments about it, but I'm not sure that the people in the room are going to be able to judge that if they haven't even seen the summary. Um, and it's, so that's, it, that's kind of my, my thought is kind of along the lines of what you were saying before, and, you know, for, as far as granting the variance goes, that's, you know, that's actually kind of important. Um, I hadn't thought about the idea of picking out peak times and requiring a uh, <coughs> detail at those times, but not at others. I hadn't really thought about that very much. Um, it, it, so I, I do like, though, the idea that whatever we decide, we put a date on it. You know, we get, uh, you know, whether it's four months or whether it's six months, or there's three months or one month, or whatever period of time that we may grant something, we should definitely put a time on it and have some review. And I think that's a good practice. So, the open meeting law still is germane to how do we move forward. 
Because I think we're, we gotta put this down in writing. And Joe, I hear you what you're saying. I, I mean, trust me, I'd rather move on to other agenda items as well, and I, I hope you believe me when I say that. So do we, do we do that today, or do we do it in two weeks from now? Well, uh, I mean, when, when do you want to put it down in writing? I, I guess I hear people saying, let's, uh, let's settle this. Let's uh, decide what we're doing. I don't know what we're going to gain by waiting another two weeks. We can't discuss it amongst ourselves if we're not in open No, but, meeting, we, but, but we could have, we could have, have Brian and I, and as the chair. Are we going to have comment from the public? The public doesn't, you know, well, the, and, you know, the public doesn't even have a summary. And I guess, I guess, I guess my point would be that Brian and I could sit down and put some, and draft what I'm proposing. Make the amendment to the security plan as well. Get it out to colleagues within a week. Get it on the website within a week so people have a, a week to digest it. They can come to a meeting and, and we'll put a time limit on debate so it's not an hour and a half of, of discussion. And then the board can make amendments in public meeting if they were so inclined and then we vote on it. And we put a, a, a limit of, you know, Brian and I can talk about it, a 30 minute limit on public debate about the draft. But, you know, I, I'll speak for myself. I'm not prepared to vote for the entire variance, and I'm not prepared to deny the entire variance. I, I want to try to find the middle ground. That's just speaking personally, so that's why I propose what I propose. And, and if, if Fred and Joyce were okay with me and Brian, and I know I don't have the time to do it, but I will, to, to put together this plan in writing and get it out in a public website on, on, the, on the website by next Wednesday and get it to these guys and then we can debate it for you know public comment for half an hour and then Joyce, Fred and I can amend as we choose to or not amend and then vote. But I, I think we, I may, I may be naive, but I think we've heard of many of the repeating comments again tonight that we've heard before, that we've seen in emails addressed to the three of us, and uh, the, the trend is, is full-time police there, and, and I, I th that, that's what I'm hearing from the townspeople, and, and I think this board is saying we need, we, we would agree to something less than that. And I guess by asking for two, in two weeks for people to come in again, if you want, we'll get the same comments that we already know today. Okay, well, we don't, don't have to see. May I? I don't I mean, see anything yeah, different. Yeah, done. I am, um, well, as a, as a member of the public, I, I don't agree. I think um, you have clear choices. You can certainly decide to vote on the variance as requested or a version of the variance that one of you amends in a way that's clear enough that the three of you feel that you're able to take a vote. You can do that now. But if you do that, you do that um, in the face of, I think, fairly strong sentiment that most of the people in the room have not seen the security plan and care about it. And even tonight, Joyce brought up a concern and, you know, you're talking about changing it. So that's, you know, so I think that's that's a process you could follow, but it seems to me it would be a flawed process that would leave uh, a bad taste if about we voted the tonight. process. Yeah. Right. Yeah. I agree. First of all, we'll all have to sit here while the three of you figure out what precisely you're voting on. Um, delaying it a bit and having something in writing and having the public able to look at um, the version of the summary that the attorneys believe is appropriate would at least ameliorate 
some of those concerns. I'm a and most of us read pretty quickly, so it doesn't, it's not gonna, you know, it doesn't need months <laughs> of delay for that. Uh, Mary Ann Simon, One Chestnut Plain Road. Um, I'm curious because uh, I noticed that one of the potential owners shook his head um, when you talked about making sure that the um, videos would be available to everybody. So I think we should find out whether they wouldn't accept that to the police. To the police. But I think you, you should find out whether they would accept that before we vote up it or think about it. <coughs> uh, my name is Nick Spagnola. I just know over the past couple weeks we worked really hard on that security plan. We got input from key stakeholders and uh, I think our plan now, considering what's there, a million times better. Um, to act like it's not incentive enough to, to, for us to be a good operator I think is totally false. The consequences of us not being a good operator are going out of business and losing capital, right? Mm -hmm. Getting a bad reputation for ourselves, right? Losing other businesses that we're involved in. So the risk of not doing the right thing and not being a good operator really outweighs everything else. So it's, we only have incentives to be good operators. I think uh, I can probably say with certainty no one in this room has ever interviewed an employee that works at Castaways. I'm not sure even how many people have ever stepped foot in there, um, but I can say out of the 15 to 20 employees there now, everyone is ready for change of ownership. Everyone believes the place can do well. Um, we all know that there's unintended consequences that come with this type of business. And it's typically an unintended consequence of when the bar business is not running right, when it's not managed properly. And uh, if you speak to the women that are there who really depend on, on their jobs, and I'm sure they're all gonna be here next meeting, um, I would say this, that interview them, talk to them, go in there. They're ready for change of ownership. They're, they're ready to, to just start thriving and, and have a good business. So every incentive to be a good operator. As far as cameras in the establishment, I mean, what other business is just giving away all of their security secrets and all of their cameras? I mean, we spent two weeks on that plan. We've worked with every butter possible to make things work, to grant what they wanted, to grant requests. I mean, the place is dead right now. It's absolutely dead. There's six cars, seven cars during the day. Maybe at night it gets busier, but it's completely dead. And uh, it's been around 40 something years. So having a security officer at the door, scanning IDs, having someone in the, in the club and in the establishment maintaining order, it's a million times better than what you get now. Plus we're lighting the parking lot, we're working on, uh, on parking spaces, we have walls going up for the abutters. So what else can we possibly do? You just want the plan in writing, and then at that point it's what? You know, so it doesn't make sense. At some point you have to let the economics play out, like every incentive to be a good operator, right? And, and make sure our capital's preserved and it's not gonna happen overnight. There's not gonna be 100 people that come to that establishment. You know, it's just, it doesn't happen overnight. It's just, it's kind of a, it's a total false argument that's being portrayed right now. Well, I hope, I didn't question your operator ability or, or, your, or your credibility. Oh. What I'm saying is, is that having our police chief, not the public, Having our police chief with access does not disclose any internal security mechanisms because it would not be a public document. It would allow him to go in and look at footage no different than having him look at external footage. It's not a public document. There would be no ability to have public information requests. It is for the eyes of the police chief as our public safety official in town. So that's where that request comes from. If, if, if it were to be a public document, I would understand your position, but it's not a public document. So let's be a good operator, and we'll make decisions based on, on incentives well, that being a good operator comes with. I mean, obviously the risk of not being a good operator comes with losing license, being shut down, losing all the capital. Mm -hmm. So um, we just want to fix so one year in the license. But I don't yeah. see I don't see the problem. I, I honestly don't see the problem with with allowing our chief to look at the footage. It's just been. Uh, I guess we've we've done everything along the way to try to make every butter happy, and we've agreed to certain things weeks ago, and now that's not enough. We put together a really comprehensive sexual harassment policy, not enough. So we understand this is a license transfer issue after 43 years, probably. You know, 25 unhappy people here now, maybe more, but um, I speak to a lot of people in town too and I've been back and forth for over five, six years. 
Um, I have a number of people that have no issues with this establishment at all in town. This is a very, it seems like a very, very, well, very tiny you segment. Then. <laughs> you know? Well, and, and, I'm, and I'm sure there are, I know there are some people who don't care, I, but I know there are an awful lot of people who do care. In the back. Hi, I'm Mark DiGiacomi. I'm the director of security for the, the uh, corporation. Um, I was one that put this plan together uh, with the chief and with uh, attorney Lesser. So issues seem to be the cameras. That was put in there. The external cameras we have no problems with because it's, it's this public area. Um, and they can have real time access to those cameras if they want them. I mean, they can look at them in the station, they can look at them on, the, on their iPhones. The problem with the inside cameras is privacy concerns. Um, and that was why that was put in for judicial review if needed or if Castaway's management said fine. It all depends on what is being looked at. If a crime is being looked at, we're going to work with the police department on that, no problem. If there's footage there that needs to be um, given to the Whiteley police, I have no problem giving it to them. However, depending on the privacy rights of the people that are in there, there may be some judicial questions that have to be answered. That's why that's, the, that's in there. We have every intention of working with the Whiteley police department or any law enforcement agency to make that a safe, secure place for everybody working there and everybody that's visiting there. Um, I don't know what else to say but with I, that. But I guess I still haven't heard, if, if it's not a public, public records document, it's just not, and we're just giving access to one law enforcement official to ensure that we are preserving public health and safety, which is, by the way, the, the, the chapter and verse in the, in the variance language. I mean, I, I honestly think, I, I'm throwing a, 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 a middle ground here, but I don't get why it's getting pushed back. I really don't. Because there are, there, police don't have access, cop blank access to everything. Of course they don't. This is one of the things they may not have cop blank, blank access to. I don't know. I'm not an attorney. I'm saying there may be a privacy concern that comes up, and we're not going to put ourselves in a box. Well, we're going to get sued if we release some information that we shouldn't have been released. We're going to review it. If we have to go to our attorney, we will. If there's a judicial uh, reason not to give that information, then we'll go the judicial route. If there's no problem, we'll give it to them. We don't have any problems with that. But there may be some privacy concerns that nobody knows about. And we just can't put a black thing there that says, okay, they can come in any time they want and get any, any footage that they deem necessary for whatever reason. I just think that's unrealistic. It may be illegal. I don't know. I'm not a lawyer. Adam and 169 Chestnut Plain. We heard earlier that the only reason why a full-time police officer would um, shouldn't be on duty um, is that it costs too much money. Um, if the only reason that you would object to that is economic, then um, what's the difference between a police officer on duty, expensive to you, um, and a video camera that would be, uh, whose contents would be visible only to one police officer uh, at a lower cost. Crazy. Because we're not going to open our business up to un a neighbor calls or someone, not a neighbor, makes a call, the police have to investigate. So the police are going to come all the time, nonstop, because they have a duty, right, to the public for any call. We're not going to obstruct. There's something actually happened. Why would we? I did. <coughs> what, no, what's the, the because the police? We don't want the police walking in every single day because someone said something. It's like using Yelp reviews to take a stance on something. It's exactly the same thing. <coughs> what's going to stop you from calling and say, "Hey, I heard something was going on there at Castaways." That you have actually, it's all hearsay, right? Because everything on Yelp is hearsay, right? May, may I? Yes? Yeah, are, we in, are we in a discussion here? Wait, wait, no. I, I just wanted to clarify the question that came from here. It's on the same, exact same subject. Her point was, without a variance, there will be a police officer with his eyes in the location. Yep. Mm -hmm. yep. Why is that a site? And your problem with that was financial, not security, not privacy. Yep. Okay. Why is that more, not a privacy concern, but the camera is? When it uh, gives exactly the same view. It gives a police officer's view of your entire premises. They're coming in. They, 
They're allowed Again, to be what there business, without a What business has police coming in any time they wish to That's watch videos? No, seriously, answer that. Every answer every that. Every every business. Every business. What business? Every what business? Every business. Every every business. Every Where? Every retail Where? store. Every retail store. I suggest that the question of the privacy and the cameras, and et cetera, be dealt with by our attorneys. And I do also want to suggest that every retail store that I've been into of any size in this area has cameras that are visible. We have, cam we'll have cameras. Everybody knows the cameras are there. We'll have cameras. And I assume that the police do not have to get a they court do. order to look at that footage. That's why this category is different. They well, do. Your, your original point was, you know, maybe it, maybe it is a question for, for for our, our respective attorneys to, to look at. This is not an issue we have the ability to settle in this room. Right, no, that's, that's sort of my point about having the attorneys look at this. I, I would encourage everyone. Thank you. Joyce, do you have a problem with, um, before we put it to a vote, do you have a problem with putting, making the amendments that I've suggested to the security plan and the <coughs> middle ground for the variance to be crafted by me and Brian and then publicly displayed seven days prior to well, a week from tonight um, if you mean for, for the security plan if it was to work on that wording regarding the uh, interior camera yeah yeah, and then the other things you're calling middle ground, um, yeah. you're talking about, uh, you know, potentially identifying some times when there would be a police detail, but it would be um, uh, not, you know, 100% of the time. Correct. So, um, I, yeah, and you're saying you get it out a week ahead of time make it public, make it uh, something that uh, all the folks here, uh, well, uh, here in the room, I suppose. Um, put it on uh, the web. And put it on the web and let people know about it. And basically you're saying that continue the hearing and have something more concrete um, regarding the security plan I think I could live with that. And then limit debate, limit public <coughs> debate uh, to two Wednesdays from tonight. Because we don't want to, no one in this room wants to go through this ad nauseum. Okay. Uh, I have no problem, Jonathan, with you sending something to Brian and what you proposed for the variance, but I guess I would like to see that before it's presented to the rest of the town. That, that's not what I'm hearing is going to happen. Brian, you're going to show it to us the next meeting. Uh, I guess we have, we have the opportunity to give comments, comments back to Brian, and he could craft a composite or, or whatever he wants for the board to look at. Uh, I think that's more productive than trying to resolve it at a table in, in two weeks. And, and the other the other thing is, I guess maybe for our question for our attorney on, on the uh, variance, going to what Joyce is saying, put what our proposal is for the variance, and if there are certain hours in there that police duty are are required, is that should that be public information, or is that private information when they're going to have a police officer on duty? Do you want everybody to know it starts at nine o'clock? So, so uh, you better leave by nine if you're not legal for whatever you're doing. I, that would be public. It's necessarily public. Is that the that variance would be public? relates to the yeah. requirement of an officer. And on the other point, I would want to comment: there would need to be just one document. People could separately comment, but creating a composite is then going to implicate the open meeting law because it's effectively deliberating remotely. We're, we're keeping the security plan as the security plan, and then we are creating elements to either grant or not grant the variance. Okay. Yeah, I understand that. I have no problem with the security plan. 
making that change, but just uh, our questions are on the variance. Well, I, I, we're, we're going to have it. Way. We're going to have language crafted. If you want to see the language a day before we make it public, yeah. fine. But then I think we owe it to the public to make it available to them more than four hours before the hearing starts. Right, I, I agree with that, but if you're gonna put it on there and make it available to the public, it should reflect all three board members' comments, not just of one person. I, yeah, you but can't I didn't do that. How, then how can you do that? that well, then, then I'm saying, then it's only one person's comment. How do we avoid uh, that? But, but what I, <laughs> Fred, any I, of us could make a proposal at any time right. about, a, what I'm suggesting is, and then you have the opportunity to amend here, but at least you're amending something you're looking at tangibly as opposed to amending something that's this nebulous conversation. Jonathan, why? I, I know that this is literally not the same as a warrant. I don't know, but it seems to me there are some analogies. Someone has to draft something upon which the, right. the, the select board votes. Right, and I'm offering to. Right. Yeah, we still have to that before we decide on it, before it's public, and we see a draft. But we can't debate. Can't be changed. Hey, John. Yes, sir. Uh, in order to not <coughs> uh, violate open meeting law, you could all write up your comments and send them to Brian. You don't have to see each other's comments. Yep. And then Brian can propose an article or whatever we're going to call it in response to your critique or your comments and draft. Uh, draft a motion or no. something. You don't, yeah, no, you're saying no. What I would suggest, and I think this is what your comment is, you would be presenting essentially a notice that says, I will offer at this meeting of the board the following motion. It will be published so the other board members will be able to see it in advance, and then when you are all convened, you may offer suggestions, amendments, and it, it's that deliberative process by which you would have to come to a final determination. Right, because if, because Paul, to your point about what you're suggesting, I think if, if and I'm just gonna pick on me and Fred because we're, we're sitting here, if Fred and I had absolutely diametrically opposed viewpoints on one clause, yeah. then we're putting Brian in the position of having to be arbiter of that, and that's not. Well, no, he could, he could present it at an, an as an either or. Meeting. As an as or. But, but if, if you, if it's put on a website for people to view and it's it's going to be motion of what this board or no, what's it no the notice would be that it would be mr edwards motion subject to discussion debate right. and vote at the time of the meeting you don't have to put your name it's not going to be i didn't know whether you, that was right. going to be oh no, no i can't speak on behalf of the board well, well, it will be represented as be. only the view of one member right i can't speak on behalf oh, of you okay and then you can and vote yes or no. To, to take the analogy, I guess, that we just had for town meeting, it would be as if you were publishing a warrant that had a petition article in it. So you had a certain number of citizens that are proposing this proposition, and then everybody will get to vote. In this instance, we only have three votes. Okay, I'm gonna make, I'm, I'm gonna make a motion, because we gotta move on. I'm gonna make a motion that whatever I just said, <laughs> that, that I will sit down and I'm saying with Brian because Brian has a certain element of knowledge that I lack and it takes a big man to admit that um, that we will then pr present that to, to Joyce and Fred and we will and we can give it to them 24 hours before we give it to or put it on the, the website but it'll be incumbent upon townspeople. We're not gonna put out a robocall to say, hey, go to the website. Um, it's gonna be incumbent upon townspeople to, to, to look at, at the website. And my guess is that once it hits the website, the recorder is going to say, hey, it's on the website anyway. So that mouthpiece will exist. Now, does it have to be 48 hours? No published? 
I mean, notice? You said 24 hours on a website. No, I, 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 no I'm have? saying it's going to, I want it to be out in a week. I mean, people have lives. People don't necessarily yeah. have the chance to read this 24 hours. They, well, you said 24 hours. No, 20 meaning. No, Fred, I did not. I said, if you want to see this document 24 hours before it is made public on the website, that is fine. But I did not oh, say what okay. you just suggested. Okay, you're saying to the two board members, saying that before you put it on the website. Right. right. Oh, okay, you, I, I misunderstood what you're saying. Okay. But then on the website, it has to be 48 hours? No. No it's just no requirement. Okay. No, but I think it's the right thing to do. Yeah, right, okay. So, so Jonathan, to add to your motion, you need to move to continue the I need, well, that would be subsequent, too. That, we're going to do this, and then we're going to move to continue. So I will make a mo I'm going to make a mo Well, I, it doesn't I, really I have to be a motion. I can do you, it. You can include it all. I would recommend you include it all. Oh, okay. So okay. So you establish the means of creating that. Amy's one who's taking notes here, so I got <laughs> And now you have to fix the date, time, and place of the next. Can we do this in two weeks? Like, Because we gave ourselves two weeks the last time, and we, and, and we, and we fell short. We, we underestimated the amount of time that creating the plan would, would take. And I don't want to do that again. I would say no. We're looking to eight or what are we the last the last week? The if it's just you and I, I don't see why we couldn't. Okay. Do It'll be the eighth. I make a motion that we continue this hearing to the eighth and in preparation for that continued hearing Brian and I will craft a document that cites amendments discussed in the security plan regarding internal security cameras and language that amends the variance request or I believe it's essentially conditions of the under which the variance will be granted. Yeah, I would keep it general. I I, I, thought I was trying to sorry. So we'll just we'll we'll, we'll create something for 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 board consideration by the eighth. Okay. Um, August eighth. August the eighth. What time? Six. Six p.m. Where? Here. For Sandy Lane. For Sandy Lane. And our lawyers comfortable with that going out? Their security plan going online? It's not the security plan that's going online. Summary. It's not even that. The motion is merely to put out what would be offered as a motion at the meeting of August 8th for the board's consideration. That's a separate document. For the variance. Right. For the variance. Right. What about Proposed action on the variance? The, what are the hours? So the, the yet to be determined, yeah. I think. Excuse me? Yet Six. to be determined. Oh, for this, for the continuation of the hearing? The hours for, for when, what would be required would be something that we'll, we'll figure out what I'm going to propose. But I guess I'm still, the security plan has an amendment attached to it in terms of internal security cameras and access by our, our chief. And, and I guess I, I'm going to go back to what I said before. I, I think that it's, unless you tell me that it's just legally a quagmire, to put not the plan, but a summary, an executive summary of the plan so that the public has some sense. In the absence of comment back from the licensee or our licensee's counsel, I would not post that document. We'll make comment extraditiously. Sure. I'm sorry? And we'll make comment as soon as we, we just got it. So we'll make comment and then you guys go from there. And your, the subject in your motion can address elements that might be included in a security plan, but wouldn't be copying the security plan. In other words, you've expressed an interest about the video. So your motion could address that because in granting a variance or acting on a variance, the board also has the authority to impose conditions, which is essentially what your document is going to reflect. Right. So in no way does the public ever get to see even a 30,000 foot level of the security plan? That could happen, but the licensee- But they gotta look at it first. want a chance to review and comment. Okay. 
Okay. Well, could that happen before the next meeting? It absolutely will, Terry. Oh, okay. It absolutely will. Otherwise, we won't have the meeting. Okay, thank you. So okay. that, that's only if the licensee agrees to share that. Right. If they don't, there's Well, there's going to be a conversation there. I'm sure we can work something out. I would anticipate, yes. Yes. Okay. okay. All those in favor? Okay. Joyce? Uh, I'm in favor of that. Fred? Yes. Me, yes. This hearing is continued until August the 8th at 6 p.m. here at 4 Sandy Lane. Ms. Barron. If the vote on the variance has been postponed for two weeks, what can be done between now and then to enforce 62-14B and make sure there is no physical contact going on between patrons and staff? Um, I, I'll speak for myself because it doesn't, you know, we haven't enforced it for 42 years. We should be. We should start immediately. It's a matter of public health and safety. I, I am. Put that on the website. I'm sorry? Put that on the website. Can the police be asked over the next two weeks to make regular stops in there Absolutely. and Absolutely. speak with staff Absolutely. to just to let them know? Because they probably don't even know that they're doing something illegal. Absolutely. If it has been enforced. Absolutely. That will be done? Yes. No, Maybe you can go to the performance. I've been trying to get him to go. <laughs> with me. With me. I'm not going to call you. You're calling me? <laughs> I asked Donna. I asked Becky. All right. Well, Joyce, you still with us? I'm, I'm sorry, what? Not no, 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 no. I'm sorry. 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 What about the town hall? He's got. He's just has a couple questions, Paul. Yeah. Um, yeah. I just want to be clear. That will that next meeting happen if you guys do not agree? Um, I don't know. So it, it is kind of. Uh, I, I see no reason why we're not going to agree. Okay. I just want to make sure. Yeah, that's. But you know. But if there's a what if? I I, I don't have the witch's crystal ball. So yeah. we all wish we did. Yeah, I know. <laughs> all right. Okay. Thank Thanks. Good night. Um, Hi. Town hall. Town hall. Town hall. Okay, hey, you, there's a couple of little pinpoints in the back of the room that keep moving back and forth. I think it's two people. They should move up a little closer so I'm they can be seen. I just want to hear what, what's with the, town. the town hall update. What's the town hall update? Is there a town hall update? There is. Um, the general and subcontractors are continuing to work on punch list items. So we're, we're past the point of major construction being completed and they're on the punch list items. Um, Fred, this, is this, the last I heard they were hoping for substantial completion by the end of the week. I don't know if that's still true or not, but um, it'll depend on how quick these items get done. But um, the finish line is definitely in sight. Is there gonna be a grand opening? So yes. The, yep. The board talked last time. I don't know if we officially said it, but I apparently think not until September. Okay, okay. until September. Yeah. This September. Good work, guys. I miss you all. Oh yeah, I'm sure. Don't be a stranger. Okay. We'll put you on a committee if you want. <laughs> I'm on too. All right. We're gonna we're gonna move through this. Okay. Post haste. 2018 state primary election signed election warrant. Twenty eighteen state primary, September fourth, two thousand eighteen. Come vote. What time are polls open? Seven AM and they close at eight PM unless I read that wrong. Okay. Is that right, Amy? Does it say seven, seven eight? Seven AM to eight PM, right? Yes, it does. All right. Select board department liaison assignments. We got them this time. Look in your packet. These are the current ones. How far into the pack? Uh, in the middle. So memorandum. You want me to look up the FY18s? 
Um, Fred had water and fire. Jonathan had highway and police. And Joyce had something that we called town offices. So I think that included the treasurer collector like we talked about last time, and I think we encompass any other. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, anything that wasn't one of the other departments. Right. So we need to figure out what we want to do for FY19. We had talked last time about adding somebody for the schools. Um, I don't know that we've ever had anybody for the library. I don't know if that makes sense. Um, the town of Mason, they're all, they're, I mean, they've got an, uh, an oversight board already. They do. Um, They'd be like having a liaison to the assessors. They've got an oversight. I mean, they, yeah. yeah, I just don't. Um, so we got to fill these in then. Let's just go down, police. I'm more than happy to give that up. <laughs> Should we auction these? Or do you want to pull them from a hat? Or what do we want to do? I'll, I'll trade, I don't know who has it, I'll trade town offices, town administrator for police. The town administrator is typically oh, the chair. Oh, well, I'm already the town administrator, I guess, because I'm the chair. But I don't. Right. Uh, I, I've never, I don't think I've ever been a police liaison, and if I remember right, uh, we're liaisons responsible for the, uh, uh, the, the yearly um, evaluations, or is the liaison? Yes. Because I think that was the main thing, I think last time around I was actually in uh, fire and water. Um, and I remember that was the main duty for the liaison to, was to take care of those, um, uh, the evaluations. Um, and we were just kind of getting used to doing them at the time. Uh, and maybe there's other duties that the liaison would do. I would imagine it would be something like if a particular problem came up, then Brian could call up his handy select board liaison person to you know, see if they could, you know, lend a hand on whatever issue might happen to come up. Yes. Is that a reasonable summary? That's my understanding. Okay. Well, it sounds like Jonathan wants to get rid of police, um, and uh, I would, I, I probably should pick it up then. If Jonathan would want a little break from the police and he can have the town offices, we can swap those. Yep. We'll vote on these all together, all right? Okay, so. Okay. JPF, fire. Yeah, I would continue to do fire and, and also uh, water, I guess. I oh, you, so you have those now? Yes. Yeah. Me and fire and water. Funny how those go together. I, it, okay. Yeah. F O F next to each other. Buildings. E well, I'll, really I'll keep the highway. Okay. Yep. All right. Um, Joyce has schools. Uh, yeah, I, I would be fine with but uh, with being a school liaison. Although I don't believe there are any uh, like employee evaluations that go with that. That's mainly term. I think. It would be mainly trying to keep communication open, especially with the new principal. And um, I was on the committee that helped really get the finalists, so I'm, I'm actually kind of psyched about that. I believe it's called relationship steward, relation stewardship. Oh, okay, there we go. And no library, so. That's it, right? That's it. Yeah, the tenant administrator is is, um, is the chair. Yeah. So that will rotate. Yeah. Okay. All right. Motion to accept as has been discussed. Second. Roll call vote. Joyce. Aye. Brad. Yes. Me. Yes. So to recap, Joyce has police. Fred has fire. Jonathan has highway. Fred has water, Jonathan has town offices, Jonathan has town administrator, Joyce has schools. Sounds like a plan. <clears throat> right? Yeah. Will bike for food. This September 13, 30, 2018. This is the annual request that they can have a water table out by the street on Long Plain Road. And um, last year we allowed them to put a porta potty up against the building here. So the cyclists who needed to use the 
<clears throat> bathrooms could use a semi-decent facility instead of the woods. The, the 30th is what kind of a day? Sunday. It's a Sunday, so we couldn't offer them this fine facility instead of making them have the cost of a porta potty. Typically not open. Right. Okay. And last year we asked for um, that we the town be listed as an additional insured, which I would also recommend that we do. Okay. All right. Historic preservation. I'm good. Yeah, that sounds reasonable to me. Does, okay. does that need a vote or no? Sounds like a. It did. That didn't need a vote. Does it? No. Okay. okay. Historic preservation restriction, 194 Chestnut Plain Road. Jonathan will be happy that I have not received the final copy back from Mass Historic yet. So we don't have anything to take action on. Okay. Uh, okay. Franklin Regional Planning Board, appointment of representative. I think it should be the chair of our planning board or the vice chair of our planning board. Well, the planning board gets to represent. There's a select board representative and a planning board representative. And you each get to pick somebody. I was the lucky person last time. I'm happy to do it again. Oh, um, you said the magic words. I will say my attendance has not been great at these meetings. I, I recall I was in that boat several years ago and, and I echo the attendance challenge. Amy. <laughs> is that planning, is that planning board been going? I don't know. Do you get minutes, Helen? The meetings? Yes. I'd say temporarily, Brian, but we can revisit it. Yeah. Brian, until further notice. It's fine with me. It's less paperwork that way. Yeah. Okay. Uh, request to increase library petty cash limit from one hundred to two hundred dollars. So we have a, we have a request, just like you said. Um, I well, Candace had talked with me about it, and it's essentially how much cash they can have on hand. Um, she uses it to buy. Um, they use it for postage, for buying refreshments for the events that they have, and they're finding out that they're bumping up against their current limit when they have multiple events happening at one time before they get petty cash reimbursed. So that's what the request is. And the agenda, I made a mistake on the agenda, it's their current limit is 125 so they're asking to increase it by $75. I'm fine with it. I don't see any reason. Good. That's fine. Yeah. Um, I am um, really, uh, they seem to, to actually be doing something great with the money that, that they're doing, so let's doing. not tie their hands. Yeah, they're doing good stuff. Okay, that's done. Town administrator updates? Town administrator updates. I know you guys have been waiting for this. I have. I know that the one guy has. <laughs> he waits every time. I have an email from, that's in the packet that I received from Michelle Padula from Mass Department of Agriculture, and it was just notification that we received two, that they received two applications to the APR program um, from Waitley landowners that still has to go through the process, but um, it was, the ones that were received was a parcel on River Road owned by Francis Sobieski and a parcel on Long Plain Road owned by Lawrence and Nancy Ashman. So, if those are approved by the Department of Agriculture, um, those we will see those. Um, what we've seen in the past, at least, has been applications for CPA funds to cover the match. Yep. But just a heads up that that those have been okay. um, submitted. Uh, okay. um, the next page is. This was just notification to the town that there's a. Housing Choice Small Town Capital Grant Program. Um, and I have forwarded this to, uh, but I think I, I don't remember if I included you on this or not, but I forwarded it to the Housing Committee, to yeah. Richard Tilburg, if you want to take a look yeah, I think I've seen at that grant. Yeah. Um, I haven't heard anything. I don't, you guys probably haven't had a meeting since then. No, so, uh, so. we'll be talking about it. One of our representatives was here familiar with it. Okay. So we'll be talking in the future about that. Don't know if we'll submit something by the date there. I don't know. Yeah, I think it's, I think it's a good move because they're they're absolutely right. the 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 housing the housing uh, 
programs have historically been steered towards or created on behalf of the large communities that have housing challenges, and we don't. We have the exact opposite. So I think this is a, this is great, and we should really look at that. Um, just wanted to let you know that I've been working with uh, Darcy Tozier, the Cemetery Commissioner, on, on putting together the, their request for quotes for these phase three of the cemetery stone restoration. Uh, $30,000 of CPA funds were um, appropriated at the annual town meeting, so we're going to be getting that out. And that's um, for uh, grave marker restoration in the West Whateley and East Whateley Cemetery. Okay. Anything else? Um, I wanted to bring up to date that um, I met with Keith, Keith Bardwell, Bob Lesko, and Mark Boussier, 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 to look at the, if you recall a while back, we had um, talked about uh, pursuing the purchase of a generator, use generator that used to be at uh, Deerfield Academy. Mm -hmm. um, and we went and checked it out, and Mark's going to get back to me with what he thinks the, the scope of work would be and the cost estimates for installing that, like we talked about at the elementary school, which is the town's regional, uh, not regional, it's the local emergency shelter. Um, so I'm waiting to hear back from Mark as to, as to what the cost of installing would be to get a, a total cost estimate of, of uh, what that would be. What that Any would be. chance that it partially at least be pro bono? I haven't, I didn't pose that question to him directly. Well, if he's watching. <laughs> well, you, you posed the question. I, I'm, just, I'm just asking, I get it, it's not possible, but you're remiss if you don't ask. Right. Okay. Last thing, complete streets priority plan that was submitted to Mass DOT, we approved that a little while back. I don't remember, all these meetings have been blurring together. Um, we submitted that to Mass DOT, we're still waiting on um, approval of the plan it still says pending review uh, the hope is is that we'll have um, an application in place I believe uh, for this fall I think the deadline is in October it would be great if we get that approved and we can have a discussion about which of those projects we may want to pursue funding for um, yep so I believe I saw in one of the most recent state budget said the complete streets program was funded again for FY19. So um, I think I think it's in the budget, yeah. So it would be good if we could get a line for money. Because somebody's gonna get it. So yep. um, just like the bridge projects. But we should uh, write letters to the appropriate individuals to to make sure that they're also supporting our request. Yeah. All right. Anything else? Stay dry when you leave. I have one minor thing. Uh, when we remodeled the, the town hall, we had to empty everything out, the chairs and tables, and now it's time to bring them back. Uh, they haven't been cleaned or anything done in 50 years, close to 50 years. So there's going to be a chair cleaning session on August 1st at the uh, center school. From uh, 4 to 7 p.m. So, it's a anybody, Wednesday. it's a Wednesday night. Anybody in the public uh, is welcome to come and help clean chairs. There's over 150 chairs that need to be cleaned and brought back. So, the plan is to do that uh, before we uh, have any activity in the town hall. So, in the chairs you clean, you have to carry up the sidewalks from the center school to the town hall. Know. <laughs> okay. All right, maybe not that part. Duly noted. Uh, I'd like to make a motion to adjourn. Okay, second. I would second that. Good night.